Hello and a very warm welcome to the Online Wine Tasting Club and we are going to be preparing three quite simple dishes today. We're going to start with some smoked salmon on some chard and dill pancakes which is going to be super delicious with some creme fraiche with chives and then we're going on to the main course which we're actually going to prepare first and this is a little bit of a Spanish inspired coco van style casserole dish with a layer of potatoes that absorb all of that wine into them and a layer of kale that just gently steams on top at the end to give you the whole meal in one bowl which is nothing to do with the fact that we only have one hob at the winery. So what we're going to do to start off is just we're going to take a, a large oven proof dish which has got a good tight lid to fit onto it and we're going to put in just a little bit of a glug of olive oil to get these things going. Now, we are going to fry up a little bit of chorizo to start off. The chorizo has got a little bit of a skin on the outside of it and we are just going to try to cut through everything other than that last little bit of skin at the end. So just as you can feel it's coming down to the end, try to sort of carve towards it. Now, there it is, there it goes. So we can now just take that off, peel it off, and that leaves us without any nasty sort of paper bits inside. Okay, so we've pretty much cleaned this up now, and what we're gonna do is try to just dice this up in small sort of half centimeter cube pieces. And probably the best way to go is lengthways first, so that we can keep all these pieces, and there are fewer knife cuts you have to make. So when you've done that, gather them all up together, and along like this. This is the sort of, um, replacement for what in the original copper van is obviously just sort of lardons, you know, the slightly fatty bacon style. So this is going to go into the pan. So when we come and that goes in, and we're going to put this on on a sort of medium heat. So we're going to just let this simmer away, the fat will render down, you'll get all these beautiful spices coming out of the chorizo that's going to give this dish such a, a really cool flavour. What we're going to be doing is to add a few things to this, and first of that is some nicely chopped shallots. And so I'm going to come over to my wonderful helper here. These I've just peeled and halved and obviously chopped the tip and tails off them as well. So that is going to give it some really nice sort of caramelly uh, delicious flavours that come through. We've also got some button mushrooms here. Now I've gone for the trying to keep these nice and small. By keeping them small we can keep them whole but if you've got slightly larger ones or chestnut mushrooms don't worry too much just chop them in half and the same instructions apply. While we're doing this, I think in a Keith Floyd, we would like to just have a little glass of wine. Darling, would you like a little drop too? Yes, please. Oh. There we go. Thank you. So we've been doing a bit of light reading while this cooks. We've been reading Fiona Beckett's How to Match Food and Wine and Victoria Moore's The Wine Dying Diction, both of which I thoroughly recommend. So this is sizzling away nicely now. A good bit of colour coming in. You can just see the oil starting to get that beautiful, rich colour coming out of it. And turn that heat down a bit. We don't want it to go too crispy. So now that's been simmering away for a few minutes, we're going to pop in our shallots and our mushrooms. And at this point, at this point we're going to make it incredibly simple by adding some butter. 25 grams of butter. looking beautiful and smelling absolutely delicious. So we're just going to let this fry away for a little bit. As we add the chicken, there's a lot of juices that come out of the chicken that reduce the temperature. So we want to keep these just going away on their own and then what we'll do is we'll take them out of the pot and then do the chicken on its own. But we are going to add a lot of garlic. Now we say about two to three cloves in the recipe. However, this is a Spanish dish and to be honest, I like a lot of garlic. So Go with whatever you feel comfortable with. Give that a bit of a stir as well. Okay, so what we're going to do with this kitchen paper is we're just going to basically put our chicken thighs into it and just make sure that we just give them a little good pat down to dry them. Nicely. Now I've gone for the skin on, just adds a little bit more fat and flavour to it, which we're really going for with this, this dish. So here we have four delicious looking free range chicken thighs. 
We've got the bone in. Again, that really helps bring a little bit more character into the, into the sauce. So we're just gonna make sure we season both sides with a little bit of salt and pepper. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check on how the schlots and the mushrooms are doing. So. Lots looking good, the mushrooms cooking away nicely, just starting to break apart a bit, which I think is what we're really going for with that. Got a little bit of structure left to them, but just starting to get really melty soft. Cool, so that, I believe, is ready. So we're going to just get a bowl and spin this out and into the bowl. We'll keep this for later. Right, put that on the side, and it is chicken time. So we're gonna go with this with the skin down. That's, again, just gonna try to really crisp it up nicely before any of the, the meat juices come out. Let's get this heat up a bit. Want to develop some color on those skins. And in they go. I hope it's smelling as good for you as it is for us. So we're gonna be cooking this in some tempranillo, so I've gone for a typical classical Rioja. There'll probably be a little bit of garnacha in there as well, but for the sake of this, it does the job. This one's from my local corner shop. Don't tell Jamie. Okay, now that's been on there for a few minutes, I'm going to start to turn these over and just get the other side going. Put away nicely. I've only got a few more minutes left. So what I'm going to do while that's going, is I'm just going to dice up some potatoes. Now we said about 250 grams. If you're a very carby person, there's a bit more. If you're not a very carby person, there's a bit less. What we're aiming for here is trying to get about a centimetre thick pieces. So they are, I've got a big surface area to absorb lots of that delicious wine and sauce. It still holds together nicely. You can de-skin them if you want, but they'll be fine without. This chicken is now looking pretty uh, nice and crispy on the outside. We turn it over a few times. Looking good. I think we can get that off the heat. And it's nearly time for the wine part of your online wine tasting club. Not all that. So, we're going to be aiming to use a large glass, about 250 millilitres, unless you like a lot more of it. So, the first thing to do is just to deglaze the pan, which is to lift up the enemy. Into this, we're going to put the rest of the wine. Love liberally. Like that. And the other thing we're going to need is a little bit of chicken stock. So I'm cheating. I'm using a Knorr. Other stock coats are available, but these stock pots I find are pretty good. So I'm going to mix this up with some boiling water. Okay, so we give this a bit of a stir. And into that mix, go there's shallots, the chorizo, and mushrooms. Just nestling in there. We are also going to put our tomato puree, about that much. Add a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Give that a nice mix of this good high heat. I'm just gonna let this boil away and just drive off a little bit of that excess water. And let that stock and wine sauce concentrate down beautifully. 
This does not need to be pretty. It's a very rustic looking dish. We just want to try to cover it all up and make sure that there's a nice bit of liquid for the potatoes to go into. That's looking pretty good. Got two little bay leaves. These are a little bit smaller than I was expecting. I was going to pop them straight into the middle a bit, sticking out so that we can get them out a bit easier at the end. So next up, to date this lid, just cover it up and let's get it into the oven. We'll set a timer on that for one hour and then we can go and have our starter. Okay, so we're on to the starter and we're going to be making some pancakes. Now, everybody loves pancakes. These ones have got vegetables in, so are good for you, which is nice. We're going to start off by sifting our flour into a pot. To that we add half a teaspoon of baking soda, which just helps get them all nice and fluffy. That goes. We are then going to crack in an egg. Now, this says a medium egg, but um, we've got chickens in the garden, so I just pick my favourite chicken. Don't have favourites. And last but not least, we pour in some milk. Then put in just a little bit of a pinch of salt and it's time to whisk it all up. If you just got one of those uh, little sugars, that's fine for the hand whisk, it doesn't matter. So now that is nice and smooth, we are going to fold in. Our chart and still. goodness. Now we're going to use about two tablespoons of this uh, mixture for each pancake. And so we're going to start getting a nice frying pan, suitably warm. I've just put a little bit of oil on this and just smoothed it out. Now the last thing that's going to go into this is a little bit of melted butter. Now it just so happens that this is about the right sort of ladle spoon for about two tablespoons. Out. Let's do these ones at a time. We're going to cook these for about three minutes on each side. We're just looking for a little bit of nice crispy brownness on each side of that. Um, and when you start to see that, then it's probably not far from done.
finally, the dish is looking pretty good and it's smelling absolutely delicious. So we're gonna get out of the oven and finish it off. The chicken is bubbling away, potatoes are all nested on top, everything looks beautifully cooked. Um, we are now just basically going to take our kale, which we have chopped, we've removed all of the stalky bits off the middle, so it's just the nice leaves left there. It's all chopped up, and that is going to make a little layer on top. And that's going to steam again in the wine and chicken stock juices, and that will be delicious. And it's going to take about five to ten minutes, just keep a good eye on it. Get that in there. We'll put the lid back on top, don't forget to use the oven glove because that, of course, is hot. And it's back in the oven. Five to ten minutes. 